Hello, I'm Courtney Searwalt, Indiana 4-H Animal Science Extension Specialist. Today, I am joined by Kara Harbison, who is the Indiana 4-H Online Extension Specialist. This video will assist you in properly identifying your 4-H dairy goat and 4-H pygmy goat animals in the 4-H Online system. As a reminder, please always refer to your local county extension office for county-specific information regarding your 4-H animal projects. Before we get started, we would just like to make sure to remind you of a few identification requirements. Animal identification information must be entered in the 4-H online system by May 15th in order to be eligible for the Indiana State Fair. Again, that deadline is May 15th. For dairy goat registered females, you must have a breed registry tattoo inputted into the 4-H online system in order to be eligible to be shown at the Indiana State Fair. For dairy goat weathers, you must have a five-digit county tag or tattoo inputted by May 15th. For pygmy goat registered pygmy goats, you must have a breed registry tattoo or microchip that matches the registration paper. For unregistered pygmy goats, you must have an official USDA scrapie tag or official scrapie tattoo. Again, the magical deadline is May 15th. Please make sure you are in compliance. Without further ado, I will turn it over to Kara, who will assist us in utilizing the 4-H on online system to properly identify our animals. Okay, you will visit v2.4honline.com and log in with your family online credentials like you did for enrollment. We'll get signed in, and let's locate the first member that you wish to enter your animals for. And we'll start with our dairy goats. I'm gonna scroll down here and find my club member. We're gonna pick Creighton, put view. Now I get over to the left-hand side where you see the tab that says animals. Any animals already identified will show up down here below but we're going to add an animal for our example today. Add new animal and locate your animal type. Do take note with dairy goats, um, in the past we had just one option to say dairy goats. Now we have indicated dairy goat females and dairy goat weathers. So please select the proper one. We'll click on dairy goat female and you'll see that it requires a tattoo. So we'll put in her tattoo. Click Save. Be sure to read through all the identification instructions and also please make sure you contact your local extension office to get any further instructions. Once you've read through all the information, then click Show Questions. We'll scroll back up here to the top to put in our information. Animal's name, you'll notice that that is not required, but please make sure, one, that you are entering in all the required fields, but also be sure to fill in any kind of information that you have on that animal, just so that will help with identification when you get to your local county fair and also with the state fair. So animal name, we will put in her name here choose the animal's birth date. We'll select the breed. You can indicate if they are county raised or not. Premise ID. Please note that all livestock have to have a premise ID to exhibit livestock in Indiana. If you do not have a premise ID or you don't remember your premise ID, please contact the Board of Animal Health. Please do not wait until May 15th to start this process because it does take a little bit of time. So we will put in our information here on our premise ID, registration number. If you have that, you can enter that at this time. Again, you'll see it's not, I, it's not required for dairy goat females. Scrapey, flock tag, 
This is required for unregistered dose, so please make sure you take note of that if this is an unregistered doe. And we already entered in the tattoo. We'll go back through, make sure we entered everything in that we have and is required of us. Again, make sure you are referring to your county extension office if you have further identification instructions. We'll click next. No files to upload at this time for dairy goats. And then we'll click next. We get a review page to review every all the information we had put in. If anything's incorrect, we can go back and correct it. Otherwise, we're good to submit. Upon submission of your animal ID, you will receive an email notification to let you know that that animal is now in active status. You may go back in and edit that information anytime before the May 15th deadline. We'll go back to our animals tab where we can add another animal. If we needed to go to another member, we could go back to our member list to find the next member to enter animals for. Do note that animals are co-enrolled co in family profiles. So we've entered this doe in for Creighton, but it is identified, can be used as identification for all members of that family. Again, animal sharing is only allowed within the family. Now we'll go on to a pygmy goat um, example. So I will click on add an animal, add new animal, and we'll do our pygmy goat. Again, tattoo is required. We'll click save. We'll make sure we read through all the information again and click show questions. Do note, um, since not all the pygmy goats would necessarily have a tattoo, this is where you would also put in if it's a breed registry tattoo, you'd put that in, or a microchip matching the registration papers or the USDA scrapie identification for those unregistered pygmy goats. We'll go back up here to the top, and we'll put in our goat's name. We'll select the birth date. indicate if it was county raised or not. Put in that premise ID again. And the gender. All of our information is in. We'll click next. Again, no files for pygmy goats. Click next. Everything's correct. And click submit. Again, we will get another email notification that that animal is now active. Please be sure, again, to be in contact with your local extension office for any additional identification requirements. Again, all animals must be registered by May 15th in the 4-H online system. We wish you best of luck in your animal exhibits.